This is where your uh, rotation is going to be here across Highway 81, and that is a really good indicator of some rotation, perhaps even at the lower levels here. Microcast is doing a great job picking up on that fog here. You see that right along the I-44 corridor and points towards the east. It'll be a wet commute for many. Sky 17 meteorologist Matt DePiro joins us live with a check of radar and a preview of our soggy Friday on the way. Hey, Matt. That is right. Yeah, I told you it's going to rain, and it certainly is this morning, that rain coming in from the south. It's very cold out here. It's about 10 degrees, according to uh, my weather instrument here, and even being from New England, I can tell you this is cold no matter what part of the country you are from. But one of the best locations is right here in a storm shelter. Gentle snow Christmas Eve would be cool. But I know you're setting the mood there, Jen. There That's you perfect. go. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for 7 News at 4. Pretty wild. It's really dangerous. Yeah. yeah. I mean, driving through New York City on a hot battery powered skateboard. <laughs> driving in New York City at all. Period. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Walking through yeah. New York City, dangerous. Like, right. wow, that takes it to a whole new level. Got a live view for you now through the lens of our. This is Skywarn 7 Weather with meteorologist Matt DePiro. Hope we had a chance to enjoy yesterday's weather. Really just doesn't get much better across uh, Texoma. We could have this maybe five days out of the week and two days of rain. That would be perfect all year long, but mid 70s to upper 70s yesterday, 76 for Lawton, 78 in Wichita Falls was above average by a handful of degrees. Uh, we'll be closer to the average of 71 to 72 though for today, thanks to this front coming through. And today not quite as nice because of the strong winds as well. The winds though will be lighter by later in the afternoon into the evening, so it won't be really too bad of a day overall. Rain stays off to the north. Rain becomes widespread for all of us on Friday. Don't feel bad about missing the rain today. We'll get our fair share and it will be quite heavy on Friday at times. And also some good timing on the rainfall. It looks like things will clear out and we continue to be more confident on that in time for trick-or-treating and Halloween plans on Saturday, especially by the second half of the day. There's that round of showers and storms off to our northeast this morning coming through Oklahoma City. That will continue to push to the east. The front now has pretty much pushed through all of Texoma and do expect some strong south, uh, sorry, north winds for the majority of today. Could have some wind gusts uh, 30 to 35 for a time this morning. For the rest of today, we'll have, if you're seeing some clouds this morning, we'll see the clouds decrease throughout the day. We'll become sunny by the afternoon. We'll have some nice, comfortable air in place. And winds will be strong for a time, and then you'll notice them kind of decrease step by step here through the afternoon, upper 60s and low 70s. For tonight, mostly clear, a couple clouds by morning, and it will be chilly, mid 40s to near 50 to start off our Thursday. Thursday morning here, we'll start off with mostly clear to partly cloudy skies. And throughout the day, we'll notice the clouds start to come in from the west. We'll be dry, though, through Thursday evening at 70. Notice we are dry, no rainfall. Rain starts to spread in from the southwest, though, by Friday morning, and it's going to become quite heavy, pretty much a washout all day Friday. Uh, outdoor plans just not going to be good. And even for the evening time, although the heaviest may start to shift along and east of I-44, I think we're going to see, still see some rainfall for some of those games Friday evening and even a risk of a couple lightning strikes as well, like we've seen uh, last week with that game there. Two to three inches of rain possible. I-44 off to the east. Majority of rain gauges will have at least two in them, one to two off towards the west. Rain is done Saturday morning. It could be a lingering shower in the evening, but that looks to be a low chance for trick-or-treaters. And then we get up to the mid to upper 70s by early next week. We'll earn those upper 70s in sunshine by then because we're really going to cash in on some rain on Friday, which is good timing to end the month on that note. Yeah. yeah. Going the record books the right way. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. The plans for a new fire. You'll see us use our Skywarn 7 Storm Tracker 3D radar a lot during severe storm season to track thunderstorms. But how does radar work and where is the technology headed? Let's find out more. The National Weather Service operates and maintains a network of 155 Doppler radars across the United States. As of the spring of 2013, these radars were upgraded with dual polarization technology. The radar dome on the bottom left sends a pulse of energy in both a horizontal and vertical wave. This energy bounces off precipitation and other objects, and most of it returns to the radar. The radar then reads this data to determine what the object is and how it is moving in reference to the radar. You'll often see us show you radar reflectivity and velocity while tracking storms. Yellows, oranges, and reds indicate high intensity precipitation or bigger objects. And if there is a bullseye of red or pink, it may indicate large hail. For velocity, the pulse of energy determines if the object is moving towards or away from the radar. 
Green means the objects are moving towards the radar, and red means they are moving away. When a maximum of green and red coloring meet, sometimes it can indicate rotation within a thunderstorm. Let's head north to a brand new facility where a team of electrical engineers and meteorologists are teaming up to research and improve radar technology. I'm on campus here at OU in Norman. Let's go inside the new Radar Innovations Laboratory to see what new projects they're working on. The Radar Innovations Lab, or RIL, is the new 35,000 square foot, $15 million facility designed as a working lab of the Advanced Radar Research Center. I recently had a chance to speak with the Executive Director, Dr. Robert Palmer, who shed some light on the mission of this facility and how it came to be. We've been doing research for seven or eight years now, and President Bourne decided that we should have a building dedicated to radar research, and that is this building called the Radar Innovations Lab. So our goal is really to educate students and do cutting-edge research. The lab houses two precision anechoic chambers for testing radar antennas, a machine shop for building electronic components, and several mobile radars, often deployed during severe weather. The mobile radars collect useful data on thunderstorms and tornadoes. The, the main purpose of storm chasing is getting close to the storm because you get better resolution as you get closer to the storm. The RIL's very own PX-1000 mobile radar did get very close to a storm on May 20th, 2013 as an EF-5 tornado tore through Moore, Oklahoma. This combination phased array and dual pole radar collected an impressive data set. Uh, you're seeing updates on the tornado every 20 seconds, which normally you see updates every four or five minutes. So every 20 seconds you get an update. You can imagine seeing this hook echo every five minutes it's going to move from here to across the screen by the time you get another look at it. And the combination of phase array and dual pole radar is at the forefront of meteorological research at the lab. And over the last few years, we're, we've been trying to combine phase array technology, which gives us much more rapid update uh, radar signals with dual polarimetry. So the combination of those two is going to keep us busy for the next decade. And how will this new technology help us keep you better informed? And obviously, you know, more rapid updates going to help the public. It's going to let you provide warnings more quickly. And For the Skywarn 7 weather team, I'm meteorologist Matt DePiro. To your destination. You'll get there okay if you just simply slow down. The big story this morning, the cold temperatures. It is brutally cold out here this morning. It is about 11 degrees according to my uh, little handy dandy weather station here and wind chills are about 10 below. So again reporting live from 11th and uh, Lee